Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chapter 23, problem number 30, Gauss Law, 10th edition of Halliday Rasnik Walker. Uh, in figure, short sections of two very long parallel lines of charge uh, of charge are shown, fixed in place, separated by L equal to 8 centimeters. Uh, the, un uh, the uniform linear charge densities are plus 6 microcoulomb per meter uh, for line 1 and minus 2 microcoulomb per meter for line 2. So, line 1 is positively charged, line 2 is negatively charged with this one having line charge density of 6 microcoulomb per meter, this one minus 2 microcoulomb per meter. Uh, where along the x-axis shown is the net electric field from the two uh, lines 0. So, simple we have to locate the point where field is 0, net field due to the two lines is 0, okay, we have to locate that point. So, first we will talk about the possibility where that point can lie. So, we will divide the region, we will divide the region into three parts, one is to the left of the two lines, the other is to the right of the two lines, the other is in between the two lines, okay, in between the two lines. Remember lambda 1 lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 magnitude magnitude of lambda 1 is greater than magnitude of lambda 2 and field due to a line we should know is lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r 2 pi epsilon 0 r meaning field is directly proportional to lambda line charge density and is inversely proportional to distance from the line okay inversely proportional to distance from the line so, uh, we will consider the three regions one by one. Let us consider uh, in between region, region between the two lines. Line 1 is positively charged, so its field will be radially outward with respect to line 1. So, this is, let us call this E1. Line 2 is negatively charged, so field will be radially inward for line 2. So this is E2. So, you can see both fields are in the same direction. So, there is no way for field to be 0. The two fields will add up and obviously will be non-zero. So, in between the two wires, field is non-zero at all the points. Okay, Non-zero at all the points because the two will add up. Because the two will add up. Then on the left side, then on the left side of the two lines, field due to, the, due to line 1 is radially outward with respect to line 1. This is E1. And line 2 radially inward with respect to line 2, E2, because that is negatively charged. So, you can see two fields are in opposite directions. So, there is a chance they may cancel out at some point, And there is a chance that net field may be 0. But for, for net field to be 0, the two fields are in opposite directions. That is the necessary condition. The two fields must be in the opposite directions. But their magnitude should also be same. Their magnitude should also be same. So, if we uh, go deeper into it a little, line 1, line 1 is having greater line charge density and any point on this side is closer to line 1 as compared to line 2. Okay. So, for any point on this side, for any point on this side, distance from line 1 is smaller as compared to distance from line 2. Now, let us see. Uh, field depends on lambda. It depends on inversely on the distance. Okay. It directly depends on the lambda. Inversely depends on the distance. Greater the lambda, greater the field. Smaller the distance, greater the field. Now, as per lambda is concerned, lambda is greater for line 1. So, lambda effect will make field of line 1 greater, lambda effect, lambda effect will make the field of line 1 greater and distance effect, lesser the distance, greater the field, distance is smaller again in case of line 1. So, smaller distance from line 1 will make field of line 1 greater. So, both the uh, uh, effects, both effects, lambda effect as well as distance effect, line charge density effect as well as distance effect makes E1 greater. Makes E1. Both effects make E1 greater. So, that means for all points lying on the left side, E1 will be greater than E2 in magnitude. 
except at infinity, at infinity both of them will be zero. Obviously, we're talking about finite distances here. So if E1 is always greater than E2, then the two fields cannot cancel out. So for the two, for the net field to be zero, the two fields must be in opposite direction. That is true. But their magnitude should also be same for them to cancel out. And that is not possible for any point on the left side because field at all the points on the left side due to line one is greater compared to line two. So field cannot be zero on the left side. What about, so two regions are gone. Okay, two regions are gone. Let's consider a region on the right side now. Now, field due to line 1 is radially outward. So, E1 is rightward, radially outward. And due to line 2 is radially inward, E2. So, again in opposite directions. So, there is a chance. But the magnitude should also be same. Magnitude should also be same. Let's consider again the lambda effect and the distance effect. What about the lambda effect? Lambda effect makes field of line 1 greater because lambda 1 is greater. Okay, So lambda effect makes field 1 greater compared to field 2 in magnitude. Okay, But then the distance effect. For any point on the right side, distance from line 2 is smaller. Distance from, we have a point here, distance from line 2 is smaller. Okay, distance from line 2 is smaller. So, uh, distance, if distance from line 2 is smaller, then field due to line 2 will be greater because of this effect, distance effect. So, lambda effect is making E1 greater and lambda R effect is making E2 greater. Again, lambda is greater for line 1, so lambda effect makes E1 greater. Distance is smaller for line 2, so distance effect makes e2 greater so one effect is making e1 greater the other effect is making e2 greater there's a chance that the two effects may balance at some point and the two fields may be same in magnitude may be same in mag we are still not sure but there's a possibility that the two fields may be same at some point in magnitude and if the two are same in magnitude the net field will be zero so now there is only one region that is the right side of the two lines where field can be zero at some point. Okay, field can be zero. Now let's try to locate that point now. Now I have given some data here. Let's suppose uh, this is point P. Let's consider it here. This is point P where field is zero, net field is zero. And this point is at a distance of X from line 2 okay from line 2 the line which is having smaller uh, charge density field will be all if the two lines are unlike the one is positively charged the other is negatively charged then the net field is zero always on the side of the smaller charge density okay on the side of the smaller charge density fine now uh, field due to 1 is rightward e1 field due to 2 is uh, leftward e2 because that is negatively charged for net field to be zero, for net field to be zero, E1 must be same as E2 in magnitude. Now E1 is lambda 1 divided by 2 pi epsilon 0, 2 pi epsilon 0 distance. From this point to this point distance is L and then from this point to this point distance is X. So L plus X total distance is L plus X is equal to lambda 2 divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 lambda 2 for line 2 just the magnitude so this magnitude of lambda 1 this magnitude of lambda 2 and then the distance from line 2 is just X it's just X if you uh, consider distance of point from this point which is uh, the origin you take uh, X from this point to this point here origin to the point then distance from line 1 will be L by 2 plus X and distance from line 2 will be L uh, X minus L by 2. X minus L by 2 minus L by 2 this part this part here. If 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 you do it this way if you take this as X if you take this as X then distance from line 1 will be L by 2 plus X and distance from line 2 will be X minus L by 2. Okay, I'm just com more comfortable with this distance from the smaller line. So, 
you can also do it the other way okay you can also do it the other way now let's see what cancels out here 2 pi epsilon 0 2 pi epsilon 0 cancels out so this implies modulus of lambda 1 divided by modulus of lambda 2 is equal to l plus x upstairs l plus x divided by x i'll divide x uh, separately so this becomes l divided by x plus x by x is 1 okay x by x is 1 so this implies I'll shift 1 to this side, lambda 1 divided by lambda 2 minus 1 is equal to L divided by x. So this implies x here upstairs is equal to L divided by all of this downstairs here. Modulus of lambda 1 divided by modulus of lambda 2 minus 1. Now we just need to substitute the values. Okay, we just need to substitute the values. So x is equal to L divided by modulus lambda 1 divided by modulus lambda 2 minus 1 Lim remember l l is given l is 8 centimeters so we'll keep it in centimeters so x will also be in centimeters l is in centimeters then lambda 1 is 6 micro coulomb per meter so 6 divided by lambda 2 is 2 micro coulomb i'm just using the magnitudes lambda 1 is plus 6 lambda 2 is minus 2 but i'm just using the magnitude minus 1 so this is 2 into 3 3 minus 1 is 2 8 divided by 2 is 4 4 centimeters so this point where field is 0 where field is 0 is at a distance of 4 centimeters from the negative line from line 2 which is having smaller line charge density field is 0 always on the side of the smaller line charge density if the two lines are unlike one is positive the other is negative okay so uh, this distance is now four centimeters now if we are to find our distance from from this point from the origin this distance so let's call this x prime then that x prime is l by 2 plus x okay l by 2 plus x so distance from the origin okay distance from the origin distance from origin x prime is equal l by 2 plus x remember l was 8 centimeters so l by 2 is 4 centimeters plus x is again 4 centimeters so x prime is equal to 8 centimeters you can also find it this way is it fine That'll do for this session.